Thank you. Wow, what a turnout. It's definitely worth flying 12 hours for just to see this. Um, within my company, I work for Swiss Hotel, which is, most of you know, is a hotel chain. I'm always the geeky one trying to convince people that analytics is actually sexy, but uh, seeing how many of you are here, maybe we are halfway there already in Singapore, so that's excellent news. So, here we go, start already. Maybe we should switch it on. Right, what is web analytics? Um, the official definition from the Web Analytics Association is is the objective tracking, collection, measurement, reporting, and analysis of internet data to optimize websites. And I bought it optimize because that's what it's all about. It's not just reporting and collecting data. All we want to do is report and collect the data, analyze it with a purpose. What, what, what web analytics is not is just clicks in clicks with traffic. As you can see here, this is a classic Google Analytics dashboard. 13,105 visits. Is that good? Bad? Who knows? Page views, time on site. If you have many page views per visit, a high time on site, is that good? Does it mean that your content is sticky? Or does it mean that your navigation is not particularly good? If you have top exit pages, are those bad pages? Or maybe those are pages where people found what they were looking for and then left. High percentage of new visitors, is that an excellent sales strategy or marketing strategy, or maybe you just don't have any loyal customers. So numbers by themselves don't really tell us anything. What we need to do is put those numbers into compass. What we want, and I'm sure you'll be hearing these words over and over today, is key actionable insights with metrics and goals defined in advance. Because if you don't do that, those numbers won't tell you anything. What we want those numbers to do is give us some real answers to some real business questions. Where should I be investing my money? What should I be doing with my site? And also, we want those numbers to tell us what our customers like and don't like about our website. So I took um, a slide from Avinash Kaushik, which is a very well-known analytics evangelist, and is also the author of a popular book called um, Web Analytics in Our Day. And if you haven't read it, I really recommend it. And he came up with a Trinity strategy. So what he's saying that every uh, successful web analytics strategy should have three main elements. The experience, the behavior, and the outcomes. So what we want to do is understand the customer experience to then influence their behavior to then have win-win outcomes. So looking at it a little bit more closely, behavior. In analytics terms, this actually translates in segmentation. Customers will come to your website for all sorts of different reasons. So if we just look at keywords, somebody typing luxury hotel Singapore will have a very, very different purpose from somebody typing job in a luxury hotel Singapore. Right? Somebody coming from a pay campaign or from EDM will have maybe different reasons to come to your site as somebody just type in your website in the web address. So what we need to do is segment those customers so that we can understand what each group does. Level up, then we can use site overlay to see what the customer is actually doing, how they're interacting with your site. And if you're lucky enough to have internal search on your website, that will give you even additional information on what actually the customers are looking for. The next level is outcomes. And this is really just about goals. Why does your website exist? Even my website, which is pretty much an e-commerce site, has different goals. We have a press room where we want journalists to look at press releases. We have an HR section where we want them to apply for jobs. We have hotel sections where we want to sell our rooms. And within the hotel sections themselves, they have an F&B section, for example, where they want to promote their restaurants. So even within the same site, there are four or five different goals that we're trying to achieve. Once you've established what your goals are, then you can take a step further and start day partying or analyzing what's working and what's selling the best so that you can give more of that to your customers at the right time. And finally, experience, which is all about the customers. You and I might think that we have a great website, but if 90% of our customers don't, then it's pretty pointless. And the only way to find that out is by experimenting, testing, and 
asking them, you know, are you liking what you're seeing? And of course, benchmarking, because you might want to see also how you're doing compared to your competitors. So what I thought is come up with a practical example. We've seen all the theory, but how can we put that into practice? So I set a goal, and the goal was identify the most profitable inbound traffic stream and define a strategy for the weaker one. So we're starting again from my little dashboard, and then we start segmenting. And one of the latest features on Google Analytics, which is really great, is the chance to add some additional segmentation that you can make yourself. And it takes literally five minutes. So what I did, I added two more segments to the same data before, visit with transactions and short visits. That's anyone that stayed for, ten, for less than 10 seconds, because we can be pretty sure that less than 10 seconds, they hadn't really looked at much. So we can see straight away that we have 57% of our visitors staying less than 10 seconds. However, at the same time, if we remove that group of customer, my conversion is already 1.1% higher. So I have much higher conversion than I thought I had, but also I might have a problem with some of my channels. So then I segment further and I take traffic sources and see how each traffic source does. Then a bit of Excel magic, and here we go. So we have our benchmark, which is the site. We can see how, what the percentage is, 37% of them actually stay less than 10 seconds, so it's not too bad. We had a conversion versus the total number of visitors versus the ones that actually stayed for more than 10 seconds. We have an average order value, and we have an average value per visit. And then, based on that benchmark, we can start comparing the other four channels. So we see the first one actually is all right. It's doing kind of okay inside with a general website. Channel number two, and all of these could be a search engine, could be your pay campaign, could be your EDM, or could be direct traffic. Channel number two has got a very high bounce rate, but a good conversion. Channel number three is a problem. You know, very low bounce rate, low conversion, we don't know what's wrong there. And channel number four has got the highest conversion and the highest value of the visit. So now we have definitely much more information than we had when we just started looking at that dashboard. And now what we can do is we need to understand why. So what I will do from this level on, I will look at channel two and try to find out why the bounce rate is so high. Look at the keywords, maybe they were looking for something else, or look at the landing page, maybe there's something wrong there. Channel three, there's nothing wrong with the content because the bounce rate was really low, but they're not converting. So there you could use a goal funnel analysis and try to understand where they're dropping out. And channel four, we, we like channel four, they're the ones spending the money, so what can I do to get more of that? Now you have real insights with actionable conclusions rather than just numbers. So what you need to remember is focus on customers, because at the end of the day, a page view is a page view, right? And um, what we want to do is make sure that they have an enjoyable experience and are able to complete their tasks. Set goals, few, not too many. Work on it, follow it through, and try to understand what is working and what is not working, especially these days when budgets are being cut. You know, the little money that we have left, we have to make sure that it really does give us the desired ROI that we need to make it happen. Follow the 1090 rule. 10% 10 of the budget should be spent on tools, 90% of the budget should be spent on people. I haven't got that one yet for my company as well, but uh, um, numbers are numbers, so you can have a great tool, but if no one knows how to use it, what's the point? And Try to, if you're lucky enough to have an analyst within your company, rescue him or her from, your, from the IT department, no offense to any IT person here, and put them within the business department because they need to be in an environment where A, they have the team to then follow through with their analysis and also they need to be part of the whole business process. So I was asked to give you a specific example and uh, the goal was what I was told is, how can we increase conversion from the existing customers that are coming to the site? No, so not get some more, but get the ones that we have to spend more money. So what I did is, I started segmenting, and I removed all non-e-commerce traffic. So anyone going to the HR pages, or the press room, I deducted that. 
and then analyze what the actual conversion was. And analyze the content, the bounce rate, and the index value that those pages gave to me. And what I established that actually our promotion section wasn't really contributing any money, which is very unusual because people are looking for deals. So what we saw is that the scroll bar was very fiddly, and I'll show you how it looked like. People didn't like it. Nothing was being clicked below the fold. And the content as well was very limited. So this is how it looked like. And you can see here, that was the little scroll bar here. Nobody was fiddling with that. The content was quite small. It wasn't really working. So what I did was change the whole page. All the promotions now are on one page. Everything is easy to click, and each promotion has been given a whole full page. As a result, you can see here, 75% drop in exit rate. Um, bounce rate dropped by 30%. You can see the unique page views pretty much remain the same, which was the purpose. And in 60 days, we got an additional 1,400 bookings and $600,000 in revenue, just by making a small change to our pages. So key takeaways from today, make analytics an integral part of your online marketing strategy. Um, it's so common in many marketing departments, even in our own, just to do things because we have to. We have to do an EDM. We have to do a flyer. But then nobody follows through. Or you no know, one bothers to measure it. Why do you have to? You know, it's good to do it if you're going to get something out of it. It's not what you and I think. Experiment. And there's nothing more scary when somebody sends me an email with a subject website and he starts, yeah, Barbara, I think. No, don't think. You know, what we need to do is keep what the customer is like. What I might like, you may not like. Set real goals, and I can't emphasize how important that is. Move away from just reading data. And um, great anal analysis, and even great analysts, alone is not enough if no one else, if no one listens to them, right? So you need to sell it to the company, to the higher up, and translate it into understandable terms that people can understand. Maybe click through rate, they don't understand. Bounce rate, they might not understand. But if you tell them, well, 30% of the people look at this page and left, they probably will understand that. And finally, define, measure, Analyze, test, implement, and then start again. Thank you. And, um, I'm starting over now to Vinny.